Hello and welcome to The Evaluator, a podcast by the Independent Evaluation Unit, IEU, of the Green Climate Fund, GCF, the world's largest multilateral climate fund. The IEU aims to conduct evaluations that will help make the GCF faster, smarter, and better. We are committed to collecting and producing high quality evidence to inform policymaking within the GCF and the broader international climate finance arena, leading to better outcomes on the climate action front. The evaluator brings you compelling insights on cutting edge topics related to evaluation, climate action, and development featuring experts from across the globe, as well as from within the IEU. Today's episode is hosted by me, Eve Yod from the IEU. I'm excited to bring you today a story of an idea that changed people's lives and how that change was measured. This episode features Professor Xian Xin, who is Associate Professor of Marketing at Hanyang University and editor of the Korea edition of the Stanford Social Innovation Review. Uh, as you may know, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, is the coldest capital city in the world. And then uh, they have a very long, severe winter, nine months. And poor people usually live in a traditional tent care, and then they use coal extensively during the winter season, which causes a lot of problems. Basically, the, because of the use of coal in the winter, the air pollution creates serious health problems by threatening children's lives. And also poor people spend more than 50% of their income to buy course during the long winter season. In other words, economic problem. To solve these environmental and social problems, a Korean scholar visiting Mongolia came up with a solution, the G-Saver. So the G-Saver is a heat accumulator that essentially makes the heat stay longer inside the house before it escapes out of the chimney. This can reduce coal consumption by up to 45%. Since 2010, the G-Saver has been slowly scaled up by this Korean NGO called Good Neighbors. They started by testing out 100 units, and soon the Mongolian government became interested. So uh, by 2017, about 70,000 units of G-Saver has been uh, distributed and installed uh, in Mongolia. And they wanted to see the impact. That's why uh, my university and Iwa Women's University uh, designed this RCT project. RCT, that stands for Randomized Controlled Trial. And RCTs are sort of the gold standard of seeing whether a project works or not. RCTs randomly assign people into a treatment group and a control group. Then they compare the two groups to see if the outcomes of the treatment group are different. You might wonder, how did the researchers make sure the assignment was random? And the answer is spoons. We uh, let people to pick spoons. Some spoons have number one, some spoons have number two, right? And then if you pick the uh, number one spoon, then we install the G-Saver right away. And then if you pick the uh, spoon with number two, then we install the G-Saver after one year. So in that way, we can uh, compare the effectiveness of G-Saver in this randomization uh, kind of approach. When the team compared the results of the treatment group with that of the control group, they found some really interesting results. The group using G-Saver consumed significantly less coal than the group without G-Saver. And another thing is health impacts. During the Mongolian winters, headaches are a major health issue among the population. However, the people using G-Saver found that they suffered from headaches less often. It was clear that the G-Saver had a positive impact on people's lives. But how positive exactly? Hyun Shin and his team calculated the money saved by the people using G-Saver, because now they have to buy less coal, and added that to the emissions saved because less coal is being burnt. The resulting figure is the combined economic and environmental return. So annually, uh, G-Saver could produce economic social return of 2.5 million US dollar and environmental social return of 1.5 million dollar and adding up 4.4 million US dollars per year. And if we uh, consider the duration of G-Saver, which is five years, then total social return can be estimated to be 22 million US dollars per year. And Indic Hoika spent about 2.5 million US dollars for this project. And then the total social return on investment can be uh, estimated to be 7.8, 780%, which is pretty good. 
Now, you might be thinking, great, once people realize that this device can save them money, they'll be lining up to buy it, right? Well, not so fast. Here's Professor Hyun Shin again. So through our survey, we observed that the general satisfaction of G-Saver was pretty high. It's like 4.6, 4.7 out of 5 points. And then when we asked, uh, about 90% of the respondents said they are willing to recommend G-Saver to other people. And the funny thing is, basically people can save about $40 per year. And the five years of duration, they can save $200. And then when he asked them, hey, are you going to pay $20 to buy this product? People say no. Doesn't make sense, right? But when I interviewed those people, indeed they have some different way of thinking. So or when you look at their, let's say, their utility from future consumption or current saving, it's very low, basically, compared with uh, maybe Korea or US or something like that. So they have different kind of time discount factor. So the utility com computation might be quite different. So that's what we realized. However, the team also learned something else they didn't expect. Professor Hyun Shin leaves us with some interesting insights about marketing. One interesting uh, observation was that they care about design. Mm -hmm. They really care about design. So when, they, when I ask them, you know, do you like this new product? And they say, oh, design is pretty good. Mm -hmm. This is pretty. So, when we think about the adoption rate, how to change the behavior, basically this kind of design or aesthetics kind of aspect is really important. Mm -hmm. And then indeed we can learn a lot from marketing, I think. Mm -hmm. Because you know, marketing is about, I don't wanna say this, but I'm a marketing professor, so. <laughs> and marketing learn a lot from psychology. Mm -hmm. And psychology is about how, to people, how people make decisions and how can it affect their decisions. And in marketing setting, we try to deceive people, right? Hey, buy this, right? <laughs> but uh, indeed, this is pretty useful in development cooperation setting because we learn a lot how to change people's behavior, how to affect their choice. And then if we use marketing techniques uh, effectively, then I think we can increase the adoption rate and then make a real, really bigger impact. We hope you enjoyed this episode of The Evaluator by the Independent Evaluation Unit of the Green Climate Fund. We'll be back with more insights that matter for the evaluation and climate action communities, so stay tuned. <laughs>